Unfortunately, you might now face a problem worse than death. Building code violations. <laughs> what? It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if you literally had all the money in the world? Apparently involves some sort of ritual site. Wouldn't have been my first guess. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. This question comes from Daniel, who notes that people sometimes say, if I had all the money in the world, in order to discuss what they'd do if they had no financial constraints. Of course, it's natural to then ask, what would happen if you literally had oh. all the world's money? <laughs> I don't know how you would actually gather all the world's money. So let's just assume that you invented some kind of a money summoning magic spell. I mean, if you view all the money in the world as unlimited financial resources, I mean, you could essentially eliminate energy poverty by, by mass deployment of advanced reactor types in less energy secure regions. You could use big ones such as, such as AP-1000s or EPRs or even some more crazy, and even fund some crazy next generation reactors that haven't even been deployed anywhere yet. And that's in the more population dense areas elsewhere, mass production of small modular reactors, accelerate nuclear R&D, we might actually be able to make fusion take less than 20 years. <laughs> and other fission reactor designs such as molten salt reactors. And as far as waste management, fully fund the deep geological repositories and incident response, massive amounts of drones and modular shielding units in case any incident goes crazy. Not to mention retrofit all the current reactor designs. And of course, free global nuclear engineering education and scholarships. All right, but enough of that soapbox. Let's get back to a big pile of money. Most of the world's wealth isn't physical money. It's land and houses, bank accounts, businesses, intellectual property, cryptocurrency, and so on. Yeah. In theory, you could edit all the property records on Earth to say you own all the stuff, <laughs> and edit all the banking records to say you own all the money. But everyone else would disagree with those records, and an they idea. would edit them back or ignore them. Yeah, it's kind of just going back to it's an idea rather than more so than anything else. Money is an idea, and you can't make the entire yeah. world agree with your version of the idea. Getting all the world's Shame, cash, on the other hand, is much more straightforward. At any given time, there is a certain amount in the world, which right now it's somewhere north of $10 trillion, and you want it all. It won't necessarily <laughs> do anything for you, since without the cooperation of the other- uh, I mean, it would. It could potentially just that big of a pile of bills and coins isn't going to be good for you or anyone in the immediate vicinity having to deal with a massive landslide. Side world, you probably won't be able to spend it, but maybe you can swim around in it like Scrooge McDuck in his giant room full of gold. So you cast your magic. Nah, you couldn't actually. I know they're being facetious at this point, but no, even if it's just bills, take out the coins. Um, that's still going to cause great bodily injury if you're going to try to jump into a, bile, a big pile of cash spell and summon all the money. The pile of cash is- If it's right on top of you, you're not going to be able to get out of it. <laughs> and if you were to do this near a nuclear power plant just because of the weight of these, well, a bill weighs, let's just say it weighs a gram. So 10 trillion of these, yeah, that's 10 million tons, could cause serious, essentially landslide hazards which would be a fire, flood, radiation shielding risk if this was next to a nuclear power plant. Taller than the Statue of Liberty and heavier than the Empire State Building. You probably don't want to be standing under it, so let's no. assume that you're standing over here, off to the side. Might want to be several miles away from the stuff. The vast majority of the weight in the pile is coins, and the biggest single contributor sure. is the US penny. There are probably more than 200 billion pennies in circulation. Another case for eliminating the penny, I suppose. Calculation for a total weight of over 500,000 tons. Although I suppose you should use that argument if someone does some bizarre ritual to summon all cash and coinage. You should probably get rid of the penny. <laughs> So circulation is maybe overly generous since most pennies sit around in drawers and jars and are rarely used for actual financial transactions. Canada even recently eliminated the penny completely and a lot of people barely noticed. It's interesting. I mean, in this scenario, so I guess in the areas not about to be crushed by the cash tsunami, yeah, you'd have hyperinflation and currency collapse instantaneously because it's all in one spot. Governments, banks, markets, 
big nuclear engineering projects that essentially would no longer have value in monetary terms because that's kind of out the window at this point, or I guess in a big pile. And that would also create a big nuclear safety issue because the collapse of global infrastructure would be hard to operate and maintain nuclear power plants. You'd lose grid reliability, supply chain safety. Yeah, it's the first option is interesting. The second option, no. But the first option is more of a, it's less of a money thing than the idea is it's more of if you, you it's more of the if I ruled the world kind of thing, not the um, if I had all the money. In total, U.S. coins and bills are responsible for about 20% of the pile's weight, while the European Union contributes roughly 25%. Unfortunately for you, the pile doesn't stay a pile for long, <laughs> and what seems like a safe distance isn't so safe. No. In Boston in 1919, a large molasses storage tank collapsed. Molasses is thick, wow. so you might think it would flow out slowly, no. but it didn't. It's the wave of molasses swept down the streets too fast to outrun. Dem uh, the Boston Molassaker. Demolishing buildings and killing 21 people. Something similar happens with the pile of coins. As it collapses, the pile spreads outward, a wave of money carrying a staggering amount of momentum. The no, so there isn't for piles of money, but things like, you know, extreme waves, earthquakes, there are procedures like this for nuclear power plants, and it basically to initiate safe shutdown procedures, turn off emergency shutdown the reactors, verify that all of your safety systems are operating appropriately and assess the damage. Fortunately, the reactor is in a hardened containment structure, so unless you drop this right on top of the reactor from who knows how high up, I'm not an expert in money summoning ritual in money summoning rituals, so I don't really have an answer to that, but as long as it's not right on top of it and presumably not where you are because Odds are you're probably in a city or something and nuclear power plants are not built in populated areas. But the immediate effect of this disaster here should be able to be handled by any nuclear power plant that would be even remotely close to this. But it's more of the long term. Okay, so now what? We don't have any more cash anymore as the real threat to nuclear safety. Pennies, quarters, loonies, and euros scour the landscape in an expanding ring. Within seconds, the wave of coins engulfs you and you die. There are ways to you avoid <laughs> this. You could, say, build a wall to contain the coins and then summon them. Hmm, this looks more like a giant jar. Might as well just make it a really big piggy bank or something. Unfortunately, you might now face a problem worse than death. Building code violations. <laughs> what? I mean, there, you, at a nuclear plant, you need codes, permits to do just about anything, especially if it involves a uh, containment or radiation boundary. So, yeah. The big thing is a lot of this is papery stuff that is quite flammable, so it's quite a fire hazard. So putting this, the first violation you'd probably be in if you, say, gradually did this, would be that of transient fire loading in a nuclear power plant. That's something that is pretty strict. You can't even... And probably the biggest restriction for any sort of transportation of material at a nuclear power plant is you, the potential of especially a material like this to catch fire really limits how much you can store in any one particular area. Places with large skyscrapers like those in Manhattan need ground sturdy enough to hold mm -hmm. them up. A search through this giant document of New York City building codes suggests that if we went ahead with this plan, we would be in serious danger of violating Section 1806, allowable load-bearing values of soils and rocks. I like that. Of course, always these sort of bizarre disasters, a lot of people pick New York for some reason. Which makes me wonder, how much did Scrooge McDuck bribe city officials to get his pool built? I mean, he doesn't seem, he doesn't exactly seem like the character that is above bribing officials. <laughs> this was a silly one. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.